Taiwan! The whole trip took a little bit over 24 hours. It was gruesome, it was bloody, it was sweaty. But what matters is that we are here now. And of course, with all things in life, lots of mistakes were made along the way. So I'm here to tell you exactly what we did, exactly what went down, and rate the stress level of each part during our journey so that you can be prepared. Airport scaries, you are done. Before we get into it, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and let's do this thing. Our journey started 30 minutes before we headed to the airport, where we did some dancing to get our travel jitters out. Because let's be real, anxiety and excitement was through the roof for everyone. Okay. Oh, Thomas the train. Now, we left the house at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and somehow things were already going south. We tried our best, picking flight times around the girls' nap schedules, but routines tend to be thrown out the window the day of your travel. So, nap early. Then we finally got in line at security, but as it was about to be our turn to check our luggage in, Zoe said, and of course, nobody could check in without the whole party being present. So we had to leave the check-in line, take Zoe to the bathroom, and come back to the line to start waiting in line all over again. Thinking back, I really wish we had just put her in her diaper before we left the house to avoid this type of scenario. Worst part was that after we got back, the line had tripled. So we waited for almost an hour just to check in our luggage. Ugh! I'd say checking in was about a 8 out of 10 for stress level. But if Zoe was in her diaper, I bet it could have been lower. After checking in, we remember that the security line at the Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is notorious for being super long at all hours of the day. Thankfully, having a stroller and carrying a baby meant the airport agents will let you through a special line that allows parents to cut through the chaos. We got through security fairly fast, other than the fact that I was juggling so many things at once, so our tumbler broke in the midst of it. And also I forgot about Zoe's applesauce in the diaper bag, so I got called back. Security was probably about a five out of 10 for stress level because of how fast we got to go through it. Then we welcome aboard the plane train and got to our gate at a good time. So I thought we had plenty of time in our hands prior to boarding and decided to line up for Starbucks, which was probably the worst idea ever because it ended up being an hour wait to get our drink. And Lucas was sweating bullets by the time I finally got back to the gate to be the last person boarding the plane. 10 out of 10 stress level for my poor husband. As we departed Atlanta, the sun was setting gorgeously. Both girls were on their best behavior as we took off. Soon enough, Meme was asleep, just like the dude next to me. This first leg was just a two-hour flight, landing in New York JFK International Airport. I changed Meme's diaper on this plane once, nothing too stressful occurred, and it was about a 2 out of 10 stress level, which is just my baseline. <laughs> Of course, as we were de-planning, Zoe threw in another one of those <laughs> as we were backed up waiting for people to get off the plane. And lord, you know that shot my stress level up to a 10 out of 10. Again, I don't know why we didn't learn from our check-in experience and put her in a diaper then, but we quickly made our way to the bathroom while Lucas took care of all of our carry-ons. Now, this transfer was a rough one because it was around 10 p.m. at night and we had to change terminals which required another go through security. I can't even tell you how long we had to walk, but it felt like forever. With two kids, a stroller, three carry-ons, and a bunch of coats, that was a brutal journey. On top of that, all the lounges were closed by the time we got through security. That wasn't the worst part though. The worst part was being told that our flight was delayed by an hour, and our seats, which we paid to select, were being changed. At this point, my stress level was at a 20 out of 10. I had to change into workout clothes to gear up for the 17 hour flight. But once we boarded, we realized they changed our seats so that we could have a whole site to ourselves where they would set up our bassinet. To add a cherry on top of that, Lucas had two empty seats next to him and that gave us a lot of space to work with. We all felt so much better once we boarded. Zoe got a bunch of welcome aboard toys from Eva Airline and she was thoroughly impressed with her kids meal. The time was around 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when we all finished eating the first meal and started getting ready to wind down for the night. Lucas got Zoe's flight hot out, pumped it up, and settled her in for the flight. 
So it was fairly easy for all of this flight. She was mostly self-sufficient, except for the 500 bathroom trips that we had to go with her. Mei Mei, on the other hand, was really hard to put down. She cried and tried to climb out of the bassinet every time we tried transferring her over because she could see that we were right in front of her. At one point, I was so exhausted from holding her that I had zero energy left in me to keep holding her and swaying side to side. So Lucas took over and pretty much stood for two hours for her to get a longer nap in. I remember almost crying at one point, looking over at Lucas to ask how much longer we had left of this flight. And he said, 10 hours. And I just lost it. Eventually though, we realized the trick to the bassinet was to hold a blanket up between us and her while applying some pressure on her chest. This way, she couldn't see us, but still felt safe because she could feel us. She fell asleep in the bassinet like this twice throughout the flight, both times lasting more than two hours. Thankfully, the rest of the flight was fairly uneventful. I remember feeling more and more relaxed as we got down to the last three hours. I knew there was light at the end of the tunnel, and I think the girls could also sense that my stress level was back to baseline. We got to Taipei at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, which was 7 p.m. Friday night Atlanta time. That means we were traveling from Thursday 3 p.m. till Friday 7 p.m., a total trip of 28 hours. As stressful as some of the times were, it's kind of like giving birth. You forget all about it once you get to the destination. So I would say it was absolutely worth it. If you're also flying internationally with your little one, it's doable. It's doable. Just don't have high expectations and you'll survive, not thrive. Anyways, thank you so much for following along on our journey. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see how the rest of our trip unfolds. And we will see you next time. Bye.